it's been a dream of mine uh, since I was a kid. Um, I always say that I wanted to be a, a basketball player. And once I'm done, uh, I want to own a team. I just like every aspect of owning a team, not just the basketball side of, you know, recruiting and, and getting the players. Uh, I just like the, the marketing side, how to build an arena, how to build a, a practice site and, uh, and have a company and, and having all your employees going uh, the same way as you and, and believing in your dream. And so um, I just uh, decided to invest in, in 2009. I was a, a, a Liller uh, shareholder at the time, you know, I was minority. And, uh, and then slowly but surely I learned the business. And after five years in 2014, I decided to, to buy the whole team and become a majority uh, owner. And, uh, and then slowly but surely put a, um, a project to, you know, with the academy and owning a girls team. Uh, it just grew after that. And so in 2017, uh, I bought the women's team. And, uh, and then in September this year, my academy is going to finally uh, be open. And so it's going to be an international school and we're going to have kids from everywhere. So I'm very excited about that. And Hopefully by 2022, 2023, uh, the new arena will be ready for, for LDLC uh, as well. At first I wanted to go to Paris because that's where I played for two years professionally before I, I played with the Spurs. Uh, I was two years in Paris and I had a great time and I tried to you know, by that team, but it's very complicated over there. And so I decided to go in Lyon uh, because it's the second biggest city in France and it's a great uh, market. Uh, they have great history, uh, a lot of championships, a little bit like the Celtics. And so I figure it'd be a, a, great, uh, uh, a great opportunity if I can take over this team and, and try to um, put it as high as we can. And I knew the EuroLeague uh, was doing, you know, their own <laughs> steps to build, uh, you know, the second best league in the world. And so uh, taking Lyon, I know strategically it was going to be good to have a team like that because of the city where it is and they can fit with what EuroLeague was doing. Because the ultimate goal for me was always to be in the EuroLeague. The goal was to, to give back to my country. That's why I was motivated. I wanted to give back to my country, help French basketball, uh, go very high. And the highest you can go is the Euroleague uh, in, in Europe. And so that was my goal. It was to give back to my country and, and help French basketball. And so uh, I thought Asvel had the best chance to accomplish that. I think each year helped me understand the business better and just uh, uh, validated that that's what I wanted to do. And, and so each year uh, brought some good joy and, uh, and uh, that's why I always wanted to prepare myself early because uh, it's always better to call when you're still a player. People call you back way faster when you're still playing <laughs> than after playing. And so uh, it, was just, uh, it was just me being organized and just understanding that you can't play basketball forever and you have to build relationship and you have to you know build a trust you know with people and so that's why i try to accomplish you know with the uh, asvel in france uh and uh, and in europe and, and with the euroleague the growth of the euroleague is is i don't think they have a limit you know they can grow uh, very, very high and create a, a lot of different value for all the people who wants to invest in European basketball. Uh, you see what happened with the NBA and all the TV rights and now it's exploding. I think it can be the same thing in Europe. There's no reason why we can't do the same thing in Europe. People love basketball in, in Europe uh, and the EuroLeague is taking the right steps to make it grow. And so me as an investor, it's just uh, great to be uh, affiliated to that. Everybody know my love for the national team. You know, I came back every summer and I love playing European basketball. It was a lot of fun and uh, it's different, you know, from the NBA. But, but at the same time, you know, the level got better and better and better. And, and now the EuroLeague, when you watch the games, uh, and I know a lot of people, they're like, oh, I prefer to watch EuroLeague games than NBA games uh, during the regular season. It's funny because the, the intensity and the way they play is, is, is tough. Uh, and the NBA, obviously, is still the best league. And, uh, and when playoff comes, you know, the NBA is unbelievable. But, uh, but the EuroLeague is definitely, definitely improving. And I know that uh, anybody who watch EuroLeague, they're not going to get bored because it's, it's great games. 
it was a great season. You know, we finished first uh, in our in our groups, and uh, and uh, we had a great win against Valencia, who won the Euro Cup. So I was very very uh, <laughs> uh, positive, and I thought we were going to make the finals and play Valencia again. And uh, injuries, that's something you can't control, you know, in basketball. And we had three key players who got hurt uh, for our quarterfinals, and that definitely hurt us, you know. And we lost game three at home. And so I was very sad because I was looking for the opportunity to to play against uh, uh, Valencia in the finals because they were in our group and we did 1-1, so it was a great uh, matchup. Uh, but overall, you know, I'm very proud of the guys and uh, very proud of the team. Uh, they did very good. Uh, and I think if we didn't have injuries, well, we'll be in the finals. Uh, so um, now let's finish it off. You, we just won. Uh, we just won the French Cup, and now we just qualified yesterday for the semifinals of the French league. So hopefully we can win the championship, and it's still two good trophies. We will we'll never have the budget of Real Madrid or CSKA Moscow, so we have to try to be. Uh, smart, you know, try to be creative, you know, with how we're going to build the team and obviously gamble on, on young players. And one of our young players, uh, Theo Melidon, is definitely um, improving and uh, I think he's going to be top 10 in the draft, you know, next year. And so uh, next year is going to be a big year for him uh, because it's going to be our first year in the Euro League. And so we're definitely going to give him the opportunity, you know, to, to show off his skills and uh, hopefully we can build a good team around our young players, but some veteran players like we did this year with Montas Calnietis. The academy is just uh, one tool for us to, to be competitive in the EuroLeague, but at the same time, it's not just for basketball. You know, it's an international school and it's for, it's for anybody, uh, basically. Uh, it's like um, like my little baby, you know, I try to, that's the, the biggest thing in, that I want to do to give back to my country and help the, the youth and help the, the new generation. First early talks, you know, with the EuroLeague, we always talked about, you know, building a new arena. Um, Astrobal is packed every game and uh, we have one of the best attendants, you know, in the, in the Euro Cup. And so our, our goal is to, to double that and, um, and try to make a, a great arena, a great atmosphere for EuroLeague teams. And when they come to, to France, you know, they can play in a beautiful arena and have fun and, and have some great food because Lyon is the capital of food. When they told me they wanted to be coaches, I was like, oh, really? Because it's a it's, it's very different uh, job to be a player, basketball player, and to be a coach. It's two very, very different careers. But they, they made the transition smoothly and, and they love it. They just love it. They're really passionate. They talk about basketball very differently uh, when they were a player and now they're coaches. You know, you can see the coaches now, the way they talk about basketball is so funny. Uh, but they're passionate, they love it. And uh, my little brother is uh, the head coach of the under 18, uh, the youth team, and they made the final four uh, this year. So he had a great run. That's the second final four in a row for, for my little brother. And then TJ is learning, you know, he's learning. He won his first championship in 2016 under coach uh, Gigi Jackson. And now he's learning uh, under Zvezdan Mitrovic, uh, two different coach, two different style. Uh, but for him, it's all about, you know, getting uh, that experience and make sure that one day he's ready to be a head coach. He's got all the tools to, to be successful. And, and one day he will get the, the opportunity to be a head coach. I take it very seriously, that role of being the ambassador, you know, for French basketball and, and making basketball popular, you know, in France. Obviously, we live in the, in the soccer country, you know, uh, the number one sport is soccer and rugby is pretty big too. Uh, but I try to do my part, you know, to make sure that basketball is on the map. And, uh, and so as a basketball player, uh, I hope I did a good job, you know, to put basketball on the map in France. And, and uh, in the, as I transition, you know, uh, uh, to my future life. I hope that I can keep putting uh, basketball on the map and, and make sure that kids still play basketball in France. Everybody's excited, you know, France didn't get EuroLeague the last three, four seasons and we miss, you know, EuroLeague in France. And so I'm so happy um, that, you know, my team and that France can get the EuroLeague and get that experience, you know, now we're going to have those big games coming in town and so I'm very excited and I look forward to it and I'm very happy for, for my country.
Thank you very much. Take care.